everybody. Welcome to this episode of Matt's Rad Show, Underwater. <laughs> I'm going to be joining you uh, for this footage here, just because I felt it needed a little bit something else. Uh, so this is going to be more like a director's commentary kind of a narration. I'm actually watching the video with you, and I'm just going to be narrating it as we go along here, so you can get a, get a feel for some of the stuff that I'm actually filming here. There's just something so fantastic about underwater footage. I just love it. I love watching underwater shows, like the big blue ocean shows on Netflix and stuff like that. So um, this past summer is when I took this footage. Um, it's in Lake Huron in Michigan. And I've been coming to this area since I was a kid. And I remember swimming out to the drop off, which is what you're looking at right now. And thinking that that blue line there, that man, if I ever got the guts to, to dive off that blue line there just go straight down like just remember just thinking it would just go forever like just into the deep abyss just this void that just was like a thousand feet deep <laughs> it looks amazing but as you get older you start to realize that it's it's not that deep. It's about 20, 30 feet at the most, but it does go from about six to eight feet down to, you know, 20 to 30 feet. And so I got up the, the gumption one year to actually dive down and check it out, which is what I'm about to do here again. And you can see it's just weed beds. That's what kind of gives it the illusion of just going on forever because the weeds are darker. And so it just looks like it. There I am diving down. It actually makes for a good little fishing spot any, anywhere there's a drop off because there's usually a good weed bed by it and you can get some good fishing because the little fish like to hang out by the weed beds and so the big fish eat the little fish. <laughs> I never saw too many fish on this weed bed though but just something so peaceful about going out to the drop off and just diving down though just getting away from it all just being underwater like 20 30 feet deep and just kind of being in your own little world. I remember when I was filming this, I kept having flipper problems. I kept, lo I kept losing my flipper as I was filming this. So I kept having to go resurface faster than I wanted to. So cool when the, the rays of light kind of pierce the, the water. I can remember just like we used to have an anchor that was going off the drop off, and I used to grab the line to the anchor and just pull myself down really fast and then just sit down there and look up. This is kind of cool here because you can kind of see the, the pitch, if you will, or the how steep it is, uh, the drop off area, just drop it off down into there shot of some of the weed beds there just chilling cruising through some weeds I absolutely love doing this I'd do that forever I've yet to get my scuba diving license but I really do want to get it I think it'd be amazing okay here we go we're going to a, a different area now uh, this is a rock bed. Um, used to be a crib. Used to be a dock here, a big old crib dock. Uh, so now a bunch of fish and stuff hang out in this big old rock bed. Oh, I'm getting real down in there now. <laughs> it's like flying through canyons. But yeah, these rocks here and this rock bed. Those rocks have been there for, gosh, a hundred years, maybe more. They built that rock bed a long time ago. Actually, people that were related to me built that rock bed like a hundred years ago. Roughly a hundred years ago. I don't know. It might be a little bit less than that now that I think about it. Sometime in the early 1900s. So. All the timbers have rotten and broken off and floated ashore, but all the rocks are left over. See all the little fishies. Hey, fishy. <laughs>
a lot of rock bass in this area, perch, smallmouth bass, sunfish. Get some walleye up there. Of course, some northern pike and some muskie. There's the marker. We mark the rock bed so we don't drive over it. I think those are mayfly larva. Those brown stuff on there. It gets everywhere. There's a little bass. A little smallmouth bass up there. Get some perch in the area too. Can't remember if I said that. This footage rocks. Sorry I said that. <laughs> Couldn't resist. A few more fishies. It was exciting this last summer actually to see how many little fish and stuff were out there because for the longest time the fishing in the area just was horrible. Those cormorant birds came in and just ate everything. So the fishing is starting to return up there pretty good, so it's cool. Another epic shot of the milk jug. Going back down to take another look at some rocks. <laughs> I don't know, I, I get kind of, uh, I don't know if intro, in, introspected, <laughs> I'm making up words. I get all, uh, what do you call it, I don't know, I start thinking a lot when I get out to this area, all these rocks and stuff, knowing that my ancestors laid those rocks down there many, many years ago. I know it's just a rock bed, it's just an old dock, but uh, it's part of my family history in a weird way. Introspective, I think was the word I was looking for, if that's even a word, I don't know. Some cute little fishies. I've always wanted to like catch a bunch of fish. Oh, look at me going underneath the rock there. A lot of the times there'll be uh, crayfish, we call them crawdaddies underneath those rocks, but uh, there wasn't one underneath those. Oh, I think there was one just there, but I missed it. You can actually hear a boat motor in the, the background now. That's my brother in his boat. He was out there uh, inner tubing. There he goes. He's inner tubing with my nephew. So, I guess they just call it tubing. So there goes his boat. He's got a four winds boat. And here comes my nephew on his inner tube. See the line being pulled there. <laughs> Soon, there he goes. <laughs> uh, a little bit later in the video, we I film him kind of zooming past me. It's kind of fun. Oh, there's one of those little mud skipper fish. I, I forget what they're called, like jacks or something like that. Anyway, they're not native. They're intrusive. You're supposed to like not put them back in the lake if you catch them. My brother used to catch them and put them out on the dock, and then I would feel sorry for them when I was a kid. Even though they're intrusive, I always felt sorry for them, so I threw them back in. <laughs> I'm a bad, I'm a bad person, I guess, for doing that. The old timbers of the old dock of my old family. Jeez, I spent, I spent a lot of time looking at this, these rocks. <laughs> it's just something so peaceful though. I must have spent literally like just days underwater in this area, just with my goggles and snorkel, just swimming around all day long. Okay, now I'm back towards the dock closer to shore that we actually use. And you can actually see some, what appear to be smallmouth bass. There might be some perch in there. I don't think any of those are perch, but they like to hide underneath the boat. Just hang out underneath the boat in the shadows. <laughs> That's 
really fun. So this dock here is what that, all those rocks that I just showed you, it would have looked like this at one point, but all the timbers have rotten and gone away. Look how many fish are underneath that boat. There's quite a few. Used to just throw a drop line off the dock when I was a kid and uh, catch those fish just with a little drop line and a worm. Just pull them right out, right onto the dock. Loads of fun. Ah, look at them all. Hey guys, what's going on? Yeah, some good looking bass. I think those are bass. I don't know, leave a comment if there's some other kind of fish. I'm stirring up the muck. It's getting mucky. just a kid when these crib docks were made. I remember them going in, I must have been like 10, 8, 8, 8, 9, 10 years old. see what I was filming so I'm just kind of sticking my underwater camera down below the surface and just hoping there's something there but I actually got some good shots of the fish here I was actually using my contour camera my contour underwater camera um, it does pretty good but I've uh, I got a GoPro now, so I would use my GoPro if I did this again. I think the GoPro gets a little bit better quality footage, but this is pretty good though. It's not bad. Man, those posts right there at the end used to be flush up to the end of the dock, but the ice keeps pushing the dock further and further on shore every winter. Ice comes in and just pushes it. It's amazing how strong ice, what it can do. You can see some leftover zebra mussels in here. They just, they, they got into the Great Lakes a few years ago. Just went crazy, they were everywhere. They're starting to go away now though. The one thing they did do though is they made the water super crystal clear. At least I think they did. Because I think they just, they, they filter all the little particles out of the water and stuff, but the, they're so bad though, because they just get everywhere. They're these little like clam shaped, well, they're zebra mussels. They're little mussels. And they just spawn and they just go everywhere. They can clog up pipes and all kinds of stuff, but, so they're kind of a mess, but they're intrusive as well. Oh, anything down there? Oh, look, there's a little crayfish down there on the bottom right. <laughs> a little fish is going down to look. <laughs> I think I'm looking for crayfish underneath this thing here. A lot of times you can find them under stuff like that. Not that time. They're so fast, so you usually don't see them. My brother here now we're gonna, we're gonna go out and do some more tubing oh get a little close to that boat motor there okay now we're underneath an old antique wooden boat and some more fish under there it's kind of cool you can see the air bubbles underneath it with kind of the wood slats there goes my nephew I believe this is an old Johnson motor if I remember right Fishies. There goes my 
brother. There's my nephew. So I think this is, yeah. So this is just him flying past me. I thought it'd be kind of cool. Get some shots. Underwater inner tubing. <laughs> Kind of fun. We had fun that day. A good day. Always a good day when you're in the water for half the day. Just kind of floating out by the drop off there as they whiz by me. The sound from boat motor travels actually exceptionally far underwater. I don't know why. You can just like see a boat like half a mile away and stick your ears under under the water and you'll be able to hear it. Oh, that was pretty close. <laughs> I think I think that time my nephew was like, look out, Uncle Matt. That was me, my little cameo, my one little cameo, just to prove that I was filming this. We're just about over here, We're just about done. So, thanks for watching this episode, guys. Some of my underwater footage. That is where we were just now, but we were underneath the water. Those those two buoys out there was all those rocks. And yeah, that's the end of the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. So, uh, be sure and like and subscribe and hit that subscribe button up there and watch some of my under my other underwater videos they're kind of fun and i will talk to you guys later all righty okay bye